Hi, my name is Jennifer Nichols, and I teach you everything I know about Procreate. I have a membership that you can join for a low fee and get access to every single one of my classes, plus a community and additional live lessons every month. The link is in the description. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to show you two seamless repeat patterns with this really fun geometric design here, as well as this chevron design here. And you'll be able to do as many of the lines for the chevron as you want, and I'll show you how to do that. And you can take off with it however you wish. We're going to start with this one. And so all you need to do is start a canvas that is about 10 inches or 12 inches. Let's go ahead and start it together. Um, I press the plus sign and go to inches. If you don't do inches, just kind of make it um, um, like 3600 pixels by 3600 pixels. Make sure you're at 300 dpi. You could do 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels as well. I always use this color profile right below Display P3. Uh, Display P3 is specific to Apple products and looks really wonderful on their screens and, um, you know, not so much on other screens. That's what I've learned about it, <laughs> so hopefully it's true. And let's tap Create. All right, you can pick any color palette you want, and I'm just going to add a few layers. I always kind of start that way. Uh, drag and drop and then select with the arrow, rotate 45 degrees, and fit to canvas, and deselect. So this initial diamond, we're gonna actually duplicate it two times, and I'll show you why actually. So when you zoom way in, because it's a pixel program, when something gets uh, put into a diagonal on the little grid that pixels are, um, it just did a bit of a faded edge here. It has to figure out how to make that diagonal. And uh, that kind of messes things up a little bit later. So we're going to just duplicate it a couple times. And if you see um, three times, that, that edge is just barely faded now. And it will work way better that way. So I just merged those three layers. All right, and then a layer above that, I'm going to pick a different color, drag and drop select, rotate, fit to screen. And now I want to um, deselect it. You can see the boundary box is around the whole thing right now. I actually want it around the entire canvas. And on uniform, I'm going to go ahead and just squash it to the size I, I want it to be. So it's actually the, the teal box that I'm looking at now to see how thick I want that line. And then make sure snapping is on. You do not need magnetics. I keep distance at max and velocity at five, and we're gonna snap that right into the middle so you'll be able to see the gold lines in both directions. We're gonna add another layer at top and on the top and do that one more time. You can change these colors later, so don't worry about color choices right now. <laughs> Rotate, fit to canvas, deselect and reselect and we're going to come in as a tinier square here and center it with the gold lines. All right, we're going to group those three together and duplicate the group. I like to open one of the groups and change those colors really quick. So since these are solid colors, I can just drag and drop without alpha locking. So I'm going to go ahead and drag to that one, select the next one. As long as you're dragging right to the diamond itself, it will work. Ooh, those are bright together. I might choose a different color there. Um, how about this pink? And then the teal. I'm trying really hard not to get hung up on <laughs> colors right now which is challenging. All right. So now we just have two sets that are different. Oh, I'm really having a hard time with that. <laughs> so let's choose that pink and go a little lighter. Okay, that's much better. So we have two identical sets uh, aside from their color. And we're gonna be creating 
Uh, this, we're just kind of forming this one top uh, corner here. Let me go on a, a layer above this. This is just so you can really understand what we're doing. We need this much of this design and we need the other design to fill in up here. So we can do that perfectly if we crop. So for this one, I'm going to turn the other set off and I'm going to select the whole group and I'm just with snapping on, I'm sliding it to the corner, making sure I get my gold crosshairs, deselecting it and now I've cropped it. And I want to just turn that off for a second. The cropping is a little fussy sometimes, so it's easier to just have things turned off. I'm going to select my other group and move that to the top, getting my crosshairs and deselect. I can leave that there, turn on the first group and just move it up into place now. Oh, and you can see how hard it's of a time it's having because that other group is on. So I'm going to two finger tap to get that to come back here and turn that one off and then get this one to snap into place super easily and then turn the next one back on. All right, you can double check and make sure you don't have any little gaps. Now I like to have that all in one group, so I'm going to um, I'm going to tap the little arrow here so this top group closes. And when you do that, you can drag layers into it and those layers will stay at the bottom. So I'm just dragging my three layers from the other group in and deleting that other group. And now they're in all one group. You actually need four of these groups. So I'm just going to duplicate this bottom one. And now I have four. And I again, I'm going to turn things off and do one at a time. So I'm going to leave one here. This one is going to stay in this spot. Turn that off. I'm going to turn the other two off and take the second one and move it over to the side, getting my gold lines, and I'm going to turn that one off. I'm going to turn the third set on, select it, and move it down. Turn that one off, and I'm going to turn the fourth set on and move it there. So now I have one, two, three, four. So in this design, I mean, we, we still need to do some rotating. But you can see that um, because we, we didn't really need to worry about things lining up um, right now in this way, um, you can see our lines do not line up. But we have to rotate so that they do. So we're basically going to put all of these um, bright yellowish orange corners into the center. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to select this second group and just flip it horizontally. I'm going to select this third group and flip it vertically and the fourth group horizontally and vertically. So I'm just going to leave this first one the way it is and I'm going to move to this second one. And what I want to do is drag and drop color to each of these sections so that um, they're all different. So um, right now when, when we do our repeat, these corners because they're all the same they're gonna form a diamond like this so we want all of them to be different we want this diamond to have all four pieces different different colors and we also need to pay attention to anything at the top is going to repeat at the bottom so we want those to be different anything on the left is going to repeat on the right so we want those to be different so you, this is the time-consuming part you just spend some time dragging and dropping from your palette making sure you're on the right layer. This layer hops up to that one right there. So I'm gonna come back down to here, which is this layer right here.
And I've already decided I'm gonna make a palette change here. I'm get, Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some of these colors in as well. So I have kind of a brighter color here. So I'm gonna do this one now. Whoops, so that was, I, I accidentally selected that layer because um, I'm just working my way down. This layer is actually here because it's done three and three this way. We do have to leave them in that order. And I've kind of added some new colors into this one, so I'm gonna add one or two of those into this one as well. Like maybe the white here. And the fourth set down here. With the green, I am um, right here with the corner, I'm watching my four corners to make sure they're all different. Um, the green and blue together doesn't look super awesome, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. And then I'm also wanting to make sure all four of these are different. And I added this gray color down here. Um, I want to also have that up here in at least one more spot. So I'm kind of looking up here. I think I might do it. I don't want to have it exactly opposite this spot, which would be right here. So I think I'm going to do it on this teal one right here. And then this is the only spot where I have that really dark color. So I think I'm going to do some changes with that as well. I want to add some more of that dark color, so I'll add it there, and then I might add it there as well. I think that's good, actually. Uh, I have the white, but also this really light blue, so I might come back and make those all white, and we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do that now. So this white-ish that's in that palette, and then this one. Okay, so that's a lot of layers. That's a lot of um, wrapping your brain around things. Um, I already see another change I wanna make because I have this blue orange next to each other right here and I also have it next to each other right here and it just kind of looks too um, similar, I guess. So I can swap something out here and maybe put the orange over here. That's what I'll do. So where's my second set? Here's my second set. I'm gonna make this pink here where the orange is. And then I'm gonna go to where that pink is and make it that orange color. The other thing that I need to look at is making sure I'm not um, having things that are gonna line up. So. If, if you're looking at the four corners, make sure they're different and the inside four. If you're looking at any one of these lines, look at the opposite. So this first line here, the opposite one is here. So this edge and this edge will line up. Those are different colors, that's good. This edge and this edge will line up. Those are different colors and that's good. So you're gonna kind of do that and eyeball each one. And I think they're all different. All right, so we're gonna three finger swipe down and copy all. One thing I didn't actually specifically talk about is when we placed all of our sets into the four corners, I made sure that I didn't have any gaps and you have to be really careful about that with this particular design. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and collapse these and group them all together and turn them off and three finger swipe down and paste. And now we can shrink that, get the gold lines in the center, and duplicate that three times. And move one to each corner. Whenever you're making repeat patterns, when you're doing these moves, you always need to make sure you don't have any gaps or offsets where those seams are. And the, that looks good, so I can merge that and duplicate that. You can duplicate before or after you uh, shrink. I'm gonna keep one at this full size, turn it off, and I'm going to select the other four and shrink them. This is just kind of seeing if we like the overall look of the design and the way we have our colors laid out. And just put one in each corner. 
and merge those. Yeah, it turned out really good. I actually really like that. That's probably the fastest I've made one of those, made the color choices. Color choices are hard. <laughs> so um, beautiful. I love it. So use any palette you want. And it's just kind of a fun, crazy, square, diamond, geometric design, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we have the next one. If you have a lot of layers, just stick with this same canvas. Otherwise, start a brand new canvas. And I'm just gonna um, group all of these together, whoops, including this one, and collapse it and just move it down to the bottom here. All right, so now we need to make a chevron pattern. And I've done this lesson once before, uh, and I've, I now have a better way of doing it. So we're gonna go ahead and drag and drop a color again. select it, rotate it, and fit to screen, just like we did before, and deselect it. So we're gonna be looking at the top of this. If you want a 45 degree angle on your chevron, then um, we're gonna leave it on uniform as we expand the size of this. So keep it on uniform, select it again, and grab this middle node. Don't grab this orange handle and um, and pull it down to increase the size of it. So if you, this is only if you're keeping your chevron at 45 degree angles, which I'm not. So I'm just gonna quickly show you what to look at if you do want to do that. So what you're looking at is the width of the side here where the color goes off the edge. That's gonna be kind of how thick your chevron line is going to be. I just tapped it. Don't tap when you have something selected or it will nudge. So that's how thick from here to here your chevron line would be here. If you want a thin chevron line, you would do that so that your chevron line is only that narrow. All right, now if you want something that's not um, 45 degrees, go to freeform and we're gonna stretch this down. So now you can see our angle is changing up there and I'm gonna stretch it pretty far down and then put it back on uniform so that I can keep that angle, but make my chevron line wider. So again, where the color goes off the edge there and there, that's how wide my chevron line is going to be. And I'm gonna deselect that. So that's the top of our chevron line. And I'm gonna duplicate that, and I'm gonna take the top layer and just change colors so that we can see what we're doing here and select it. Make sure you have on uh, magnetics. You do not need the snapping at this point. And you're gonna get a blue line wherever you put your pencil down. You wanna keep that blue line vertical as you slide this down. So this is gonna be what you're gonna crop with. So you're looking at the pink line right now and how thick do you want your pink line to be? And also, if you can see here, you need to make sure you're not having a little gap down there. So you can't go down so far that it is wide, uh, white like that. So I'm gonna make sure still I have my vertical line with magnetics, whoops, there we go. And I'm gonna come up a little bit more. So I'm gonna make my chevron line this wide and I'm gonna use this uh, as a template. So I'm gonna turn it off and tap on it and select it and then I'm gonna come down to my pink uh, diamond-ish here, tap on it, and tap clear. And so I've used that blue one to um, just as a template for the other one. And double check that you have a nice straight line all the way off the edge and you don't have it cut off there. If it's cut off, just um, stretch it a little more. So keep it on uniform and stretch it a little bit more. Uh, it does widen it when you do that, so just do it a tiny bit. Okay, so that's a single chevron, and then if you want another one, duplicate it. You no longer need that other one we used as a template, so you can delete that. So I just duplicated my chevron, and I'm going to drag and drop a color to it. And I'm selecting it, and I still have um, magnetics on, and I need to uh, slide it exactly with the blue vertical line so I know that I'm not going over the edges 
And this is, can be how you do one, two, three, four, however many chevrons you want. The only thing you really need to watch for is that you keep the edges of your chevrons on the edges, not the top or the bottom. So the bottom is especially where you're gonna need to, as you're sliding things down, this line is going to end up creeping over to the bottom of your canvas and you want all of the edges of your chevron to stay on the left and right. All right, so that is your chevron pattern. If you really, really want it to come all the way down to the bottom, you can turn it on. Once it's cropped like this, you can turn it on and turn off magnetics and turn on snapping, and you can just um, snap it right to the bottom and get that gold line. Those are your chevrons. Uh, make them any color you want. I'm gonna go ahead and make one this darker color, have some contrast there. So now I wanna add some color underneath and just pick any color at this point. I'm gonna pick the green, drag and drop it. Oof, that is so bright. I'm gonna pick this orange. <laughs> okay, well that's bright too. And I, I selected it and I have snapping on again because I snapped that other chevron down. And I'm, I wanna snap it directly to the center on one side. So I have a gold line in both directions. I also have a gold line over here. If you can't get gold lines, turn off your chevrons. All right, so that's filling half the page. I want to go down to the one underneath that and pick another color and fill and slide it the other direction. Mm, this is wanting to snap in all sorts of different ways. All right, so we're gonna group all these layers together and we're gonna shrink the whole group. So grab it. If you wanna keep this as a template, then duplicate this set first and turn it off and then shrink a duplicate. So I have snapping on and I'm grabbing the whole thing, getting the gold lines in both spots. And then I wanna do the same thing we did with the last design and I want one in each corner. You can tell it's kind of tricky because I have some of them on. So let's turn some of them off and drag one at a time, turn it off drag one at a time. Makes the dragging and snapping much easier. Okay, so now I want all my chevrons, um, I want all the lighter chevron on one layer and I want all the darker chevrons on one layer. And I want all of my um, orange stripes on one layer and all of my blue stripes on one layer. So this that was just the easiest way to get set up and now this part's a little bit uh, time consuming. So I'm going to drag my dark chevron out of each group all the way up. Right now, um, dragging layers has become uh, quite tricky in Procreate since a recent update. So I'm having to press pretty hard. All right, and I'm going to merge all of those chevrons together and I'm going to do the same thing with my lighter chevron. Now I need to make sure I go below the darker chevron because that's how I have my layers set up. The darker one was on top. You can switch them, but not while you're doing this part. All right, and I'm gonna merge those. So I'll show you what, it, what, what happens if you switch those layers, watch real quick. It just made the lighter one more bold. So whatever you wanna do. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with my orange layers. And then I can delete the four groups. Those are empty now. And I have one group, four layers. All right, now this is your finished design except that we can make things a little easier on ourselves. With this particular design, you want the color up here to match the color down here. So just in the columns. So this color needs to match this color. This color needs to match this color because they're gonna join and make a shape just like this. 
So the, the best way I found to get that to happen is to actually erase a line. Um, so if you turn off your chevrons, I'm actually going to use a monoline brush and I'm gonna e erase a section from each of these. So where, where the chevrons line up, I'm erasing right under. So I'm on my orange layer right here and I'm just erasing right underneath, right underneath, right underneath, and right underneath. I can't see that unless I turn those chevrons off. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my teal layer. I need to rotate so I can draw a straight line. Erase, 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 erase. So I'm erasing under those chevrons. And it's okay that those don't line up because they're never gonna get seen. Okay, and then I can just drag and drop color. So. I'm gonna spend some time dragging and drop, dropping color, making sure I'm on the right layer. So I'm on the blue layer here, dragging to here. Whatever I change this one to, I need to change this one to. So I'm gonna just stay on the blue layer for a minute and change some of these. Oh, I don't wanna change it to the same color as my chevron line there. I do think I'm gonna add one of this color to that. Even So I now I need to change this one. All right, and I'm gonna to move to the orange striped layers. And I'm gonna make sure that I pick a color that doesn't match this one or the one next to it on either side. Um, and, oops, I can't pick that color because it's my chevron color. And I wanna pick a white here. I'll pick a white for down here. And I wanna change this one and then I want to change this one because I have this color here or I can go ahead and change this one so just make sure they're all different I don't like this yellow and green next to each other though so I might change that green I think I'll just make that green much lighter so I have one more to change I'm having a hard time deciding what colors oh I have this gray I haven't used yet Oh, and I have two of the yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to where I have this yellow, and I don't know what yellow that was. I think it was a, a different yellow. I'm gonna make that the brighter yellow, and I'm gonna make this one gray. Okay, well, I have the gray twice now. Oh, well, okay, well, so you got the idea. So <laughs> this part is time consuming. You sit there and figure out and change everything along the way. I have this white, but also this super light blue. Um, you know, I'll probably change that as well at some point. But as long as um, you look at the four corners, so I don't have, I have gray here, make sure I don't have gray here. And if you look at the um, pieces here, making sure these two pieces are different colors because they're gonna line up with each other. And then of course, making sure your top and the bottom are the same colors. I think I might change my chevron color also. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pick this gray, the gray that I'm on, and make it super dark and drag and drop to that maroon one. Or you could just alpha lock that layer. Just like before, let's let's go ahead and group all of those and turn them up, three finger swipe, three finger swipe down and copy all, and then we can turn that off three finger swipe down and paste. Shrink it, make sure snapping is on, and duplicate it. Move one to each corner. Because these are all one uh, solid piece now, it's not multiple layers that we're moving to each corner, it's much easier to move them. Check for any gaps and offsets, check your colors, make sure you like it, merge them together, and make four more turn one of them off so you have one in this state right here and shrink the other four by selecting them and shrinking them and moving one to each corner making sure you don't have any gaps or offsets and merge them oh that turned out really well so you can see because i started you can see how many the grays i have more gray than anything else and that's because i used gray twice I used it here and here. 
So you can um, change the overall look of your piece by dominating with one color. Um, it's kind of subtle, so it's not really, you know, it's not like it's black or a super duper dark color that's really standing out as having twice as much of that color than any of the other colors. Um, but yeah, and you can make, you can make some really fun arrow designs. Um, so do all sorts of things back at this stage right here. So if you want to make these two one color and these two one color, um, making arrows, you have all sorts of options. All right, I hope you had fun learning about these two geometric patterns. I have a whole class on geometric patterns in Procreate, so definitely check it out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check the description for a link to my membership. See you later.